the condition of your heart is that's you know that's the condition of your life. Hemos estado hablando acerca de la condición de tu corazón determina la condición de tu vida. If your heart is broken, your life is broken. If your heart is depressed, your life is depressed. Si tu corazón está quebrantado, tu vida también. Si tu corazón está en depresión o depresionado, tu vida también lo está. But last week we talked about the heart of the Father. Hablamos acerca del corazón del Padre. But I want to talk to you about something. I want to talk to you about the heart of worship. Uh, el corazón de adoración. The heart of worship today. And it's very important that we understand worship. Es muy importante que entendamos la adoración. And uh, worship is something that we have been created to do. La adoración es algo que nosotros fuimos creados para hacer. You have been created to worship God. Ha sido creado para adorar a Dios. And... Uh, we need to know, uh, I wrote something here, it says, uh, you know, people, uh, people cannot worship if they don't know what worship is. La gente no, no puede adorar si no sabe qué es la adoración. Amen. If you don't know what worship is, then you don't know how to worship. And uh, I want us to, first of all, understand uh, that uh, worship. Queremos, quiero que entienda primero la adoración. Uh, somebody said that when you praise, you get into heaven. Cuando tú adoras, entras al cielo. But when you worship, you get heaven to come to you. Cuando tú adoras, tú haces que el cielo venga a ti. Amen. Amen. And we have learned to worship God. Hemos aprendido. Uh, worship is, is something that, you know, it, it's sad, but worship has divided churches. La adoración ha dividido iglesias uh, simply because the different styles of worship, las diferentes estilos de adoración. And some people don't like, you know, fast music, some people don't like country music, some people don't like rock music. So worship has come in and a lot of times comes in and, and it has divided churches, but it's really people don't understand what really worship is. La gente no entiende verdaderamente qué es lo que es adoración. And I want you to go with me just real quick. Um, I was putting some stuff together and, and I'm trying to figure out how which way I'm going to go. I know the Holy Spirit is going to show me here in a minute. But if you go with me to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. Hebreos capítulo 13, versículo 15. That's what I want to, that's where I want to start. I just quiero comenzar. And uh, I want to tell you that when they wrote the Bible, they didn't have it uh, the way we have it today. They didn't have it... Uh, uh, and chapters and things like that. No lo, cuando escribieron la Biblia, no, lo, no tenían la Biblia con capítulos. That came later on. Eso vino más después. Uh, you know, how they, how they, uh, they separated the Bible. Como separaron la Biblia uh, back, you know, nowadays. And so before they just had, it was just all one thing. It was just running. It didn't have no verses. It didn't have no chapters. No tenía versículos, no tenía capítulos. But it, it, when it became, as, as, it, as it kept on going, people decided to divide, they divided the, the, the Bible into chapters and verses. They divided the Bible in versículos y en capítulos. So I'm going to read to you chapter 13, verse 15, versículo 15, if you would just allow me to do that. And it says like this. It says, therefore, through him. Who's him? Through who? Here is through Jesus. Therefore, through Jesus, we're going to put Jesus there. Through Jesus, let us continually offer up to God a sacrifice of praise. Amen. Amen. Dice así de esta manera. I'm going to read it in Spanish real quick. Dice, así que ofrezcamos continuamente a Dios por medio de Jesucristo un sacrificio de alabanza. A sacrifice of praise. Through Jesus. I want you to focus on Jesus. Quiero que nos enfoquemos en Jesús. Amen. We know through scripture, sabemos que a través de la escritura, Jesus calls himself the door. Jesús se llama la puerta. Se dice la puerta. Yo soy el camino, la verdad, la vida. Él es la puerta. La nos da la entrada. He gives us entrance. If people... If people don't come through the door, Jesus, before they come through that door, 
then what's going to happen is they're going to need somebody to lift them up or to pump them up into worship. Right. Let me say that again. Let me say Si la gente no entra por la puerta, Jesús, antes de entrar por esa puerta, entonces van a necesitar un grupo que los venga y los anime en la adoración. I see you. I see you. I see your eyes. You're, you're, you're looking at me like you're lost. Let me, let me, let me say it again. If you don't come through the door, Jesus. Okay. Si no entra por la puerta, Jesús. Before you come into that door, antes de entrar por esa puerta, then you're gonna need them, the music people, the praise and worship team, to pump you up to get you into a mood of worship. But when you come through the worship, the door of Jesus, you don't need nobody to pump you up. Pero cuando vienes a través de la puerta, Jesús, no necesitas que nadie te anime. Why? Because it's already in you. Ya está dentro de ti. See, what happened is that Jesus gave us access to him. Jesús nos dio el acceso a Dios. So it is because of him. He became the door so that we can come into his presence. Él vino a ser la puerta para que nosotros viniéramos a, a entrar en la presencia de Dios. So you need, in order for you to understand worship, you have to understand that it starts with the door named Jesus. Para poder entender la adoración, tú tienes que entender y saber que comienza con la puerta llamada Jesús. Because you have to understand that if it was not because of Jesus, we would have never had access into his throne. Si no fuera sido por Jesús, mi hermano, nunca tuviéramos acceso, aleluya, al trono de gloria. Can I get an amen? So you have to come in through the door, Jesus, to understand, amen, worship. See, when you have Jesus, you can worship at your house. And you come in here, you're already worship, worship up. We can say it like this. Yeah. Cuando vienes aquí y tienes a Jesús, tú ya vienes bien adorado. Vienes adorando desde tu casa. No necesitas que nadie. If there's music or there's no music, you don't care. Why? Because you're already worshiping. Yeah, right. <laughs> si hay música o no hay música, a ti no te importa porque tú ya vienes en adoración. Porque Jesús está dentro de ti. So, if you don't have Jesus, you know, tienes a Jesús, and you don't come through Jesus, the door here, then you are depending on them to get you hyped up. Yes, that's right. Yes, right. Come on, somebody, help me out. Cuando no tienes a Jesús, entonces tú vas a depender de ellos que te, que te lleven a un lugar más alto. So, brings me to this point is that if they don't get you to that point, you are leaving this place frustrated. Yeah. You are leaving this place depressed. Yeah. You are leaving this place bitter because now you're blaming them for not getting you to a place where you could have gone yourself. Te vas a ir de aquí, mi hermano. Si ellos no te elevan hacia la presencia de Dios con la música, te vas a ir de aquí decepcionado te vas a ir de aquí de depresión, te vas a ir de aquí enojado, porque tú estabas esperando que ellos te llevaran a un lugar donde tú deberías ir solo. Aleluya. Gloria a su nombre, Señor. Are you here with me? So, we need to understand that in order for me to understand worship, I need to understand who Jesus is. I need to understand that Jesus himself gave his life for me. Who, Jesus? I need to understand that it, that it was the bruises that he had on his feet. It was the crown that was on the thorn. It was the spear that was on his side that gave me access into the throne of God. Tengo que entender que eran las heridas de Jesús, eran la, 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 la corona de espinas, era el, 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 la herida que tenía en el costado que me dio acceso a la presencia de Dios. Because it was when he was on that cross, it was when he died that the veil was torn. Cuando él murió, dice la Biblia, que este fue, ras, fue, fue rompido, fue rasgado el velo, and it gave me access into the throne of God. Come on, somebody. 
And a lot of the times we, we, we don't understand and a lot of times we, we don't reverence in, in these times and, and we come in, in this place and you say, Pastor, well, you, you know, you, you just need to understand how my life has been. Well, your life has been like that is because God has not taken center stage of your life. Pastor, es que usted tiene que entender cómo, cómo estoy pasando ahorita yo mi vida. La razón que está pasando eso es porque Jesús no es el centro de tu vida. Amen. But because when he becomes the center of your life, your problem becomes his problem. Yes. Yes. Cuando tú lo haces a él el centro de tu vida, tu problema viene a ser el problema de él. See, you know, sometimes I come in and say, God, I don't know, God, you told me that all I have to do is worship you and you're going to have to take care of the rest because you told me I can't worship you and worry. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yo no puedo adorarte y preocuparme a la misma vez. O te adoro o me preocupo. Una de las dos. I got to do either one. Either I worship you or I, or I worry. Right? Thank you, Jesus. I can see you. You guys are, are paying a lot of attention right now. Thank you, Lord. Jesus himself opened up the door for me to come in. Listen, not only did he die, but he rose again on the third day. No solamente murió, pero resucitó al tercer día. And you know what he did when he rose again? He rose again and he opened up the door for me to get into God's presence and he's still holding the door for me to come in at any time. Él vino y él abrió la puerta para que yo entrara en la presencia de Dios. ¿Y sabes qué? Hasta ahorita todavía la está, la tiene abierta la puerta para que yo entre. I can come in and out as I please. Hallelujah. You know what? Because Jesus said, I got up again so that you can go in. My God. Hallelujah. Amen. So he's holding the door for me. You know for what? So I can come in and worship the Almighty God. Yeah. Para que yo pueda venir a adorar, aleluya, a, 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 a Dios, aleluya, que no tiene mancha. The God that is spotless. The God that is matchless. Un Dios que no puede ser comparado, my God, aleluya. A holy, radiant God. A un Dios radiante. A un Dios vivo. A living God. A true God. Jesus said, come on, the door is open. Just go in and worship him. And enjoy. And when Jesus opened the door for me, Amen. cuando Jesús abrió la puerta para mí, yes. and we're like, wow. Yes. We're in awe of, 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 of the beauty of the Lord. Estamos, mi hermano, eh, 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 eh. a veces estamos maravillados de la belleza de Dios. Look at your neighbor and tell him he's holding the door for you to go in. Él está cuidando la puerta, está abriendo la puerta para que tú entres. Enter into the presence of God. Aleluya. Come in through the door. Entra por la puerta. Aleluya. Que es Jesús para que adores al Rey de Reyes. So you can worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It has nothing to do with the style of music. It has to do with whatever's inside your heart. No tiene que ver nada con lo que está en el estilo de música, pero tiene que ver todo con el corazón que tú tienes. How is your heart? ¿Cómo está tu corazón? Because at the end of the day, God is not asking you for a particular song. God is asking you for your heart. Porque al final del día, Dios no te está, no te está pidiendo, aleluya, un, 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 una, un, una, un canto particular. Te está pidiendo tu corazón. Where's your heart? Well, my heart I already gave it to so and so. No, oh, give it to God. Give it to God. Mi corazón ya se lo dije a fulano. No, no, dáselo a Dios primero. Dáselo a Dios primero. Aleluya. Because through him, through Jesus, it says, let us continue offer a sacrifice of praise. The fruit of our lips that come, that confesses his name. It says, let us offer a sacrifice. Vamos a ofrecer un sacrificio de alabanza a nuestro Dios. And can I tell you what you know? You know what the, the very first act of worship. ¿Tú sabes cuál es la prim el primer acto de adoración? Es la humildad. Humility is the first act of worship. La humildad es el primer acto de adoración hacia Dios. If your heart is humble, si tu corazón está humilde, está humillado, es, es un corazón humilde, mi hermano, Dios no lo va a rechazar. God is not going to reject your heart if it's a humble heart. Can I get an amen, somebody? Amen. Ooh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
We have to understand that when you humble yourself, hum humbling means submitting to somebody else. La humildad, mi hermano, ¿sabe qué es humildad? Humildad es nosotros someternos o someternos a alguien más. Humility is lowering yourself or submitting yourself to the will of somebody else. Es sometiéndote o humillándote a la voluntad de alguien más. When you come into worship, cuando tú vienes en adoración y vienes humilladamente, you come humbly before the presence of God, what you are doing is you're humbling yourself. In other words, you are telling God, God, you are in total control of my life. Amen. Cuando vienes a Dios humilladamente, tú le dices a Dios, Dios, tú estás en control total de mi vida. Porque humilladamente quiere decir, me someto a ti. Humbly means I submit myself to you. Hallelujah. So when we worship humbly, we are submitting ourselves to the Holy Spirit. Cuando nos cuando adoramos humildemente, mi hermano, nos sometemos al Espíritu Santo. And then he can, he can use us. We're allowing him to use us however he wants. Lo estamos dejando a él que nos use, mi hermano, de la manera que él quiere usarnos. ¿Cuántos dicen amén? So the first thing that we have to do is that we have to understand is, God, I humble myself before you. Señor, yo me humillo delante de ti. Yo reconozco que Jesús, see, Jesus had to, you, you know that humbling yourself is an act of worship. There's different ways that we can worship God. Hay muchas maneras de poder de adorar a Dios. There's a way that we can worship God through sacrifice. A través del sacrificio, tú puedes adorar a Dios through worship. When you, when you bless somebody, when you go and bless the needy, when you go and bless a brother or a sister, when you do things, when you give, that is an act of worship. Cuando tú adoras, cuando tú das, cuando tú ayudas al necesitado, ese es un acto de adoración a Dios. It's an act of worship, a sacrifice unto God, because it says it in verse 16. There's two ways to worship God, through expression and through demonstration. A través de la expresión y la demostración. Expression is, it says in, in here, through the fruit of your lips, whatever you confess, confesando el nombre de Jesús. Amen. We worship God. Usted sabe, you know what I'm doing right now? I'm not preaching, I'm worshiping. ¿Sabe qué es lo que estoy haciendo ahorita? No estoy, no estoy predicando. Estoy adorando a Dios. According to the word of God. De acuerdo a la palabra de Dios. Lo miro y me miro como medio curioso. Y lo que me quedan funny. No, you know, you're preaching. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm worshiping. And you know why? Because listen. Ooh, let me put on my glasses because I need to see this. Lord. Pastor, you're preaching. No, I'm worshiping God. This, it says, therefore, through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer God a sacrifice of praise. Listen. The fruit of our lips that confess his name. What am I doing? Okay. I'm confessing his name. Amen. I'm worshiping. Estoy adorándole. ¿Por qué? Porque estoy confesando el nombre de Jesús. Amen. Jesus. Verse 16 says, And do not forget to do good and to share with others for with such sacrifice God is pleased. When I give, God is pleased. When I worship, God is pleased. Cuando doy, Dios se, se agrada. Cuando eh, eh, sacrifico a, alabanza, Dios se agrada. Amen. So I'm learning to worship God, but I'm doing it all through humility, humbleness, humilladamente. I'm not being prideful because the pride goes before destruction, the Bible says. El orgullo viene, aleluya, a través de la destrucción, dice la palabra de Dios, que somos destruidos por el, el orgullo. Debemos de venir a él humilladamente. Do I have anybody that is humbly before the presence of God right now at this very moment? Yeah. Amen. Amen. We cannot be prideful. We humble ourselves. We humble ourselves. It's sad to say that many people are 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 not humbling themselves. They, 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 they are so uh, uh, programmed, están tan programados that, that they don't allow Jesus to move. No dejan que Jesús se mueva. Que de Amen. Amen. I don't want to be the center of this service. I want him to be the center of this service. Yo no quiero ser el centro de este servicio. Yo quiero que él sea el centro de este servicio. Because it's all about him. It's all about him. Can I get, can I get him in? It's all about him. Because when we let him come in, cuando dejamos que Dios venga y haga lo que Dios tiene que, que hacer, you know what happens? You know what happens? The lost will get saved. 
El perdido va a ser salvo. The sick will be healed. El enfermo va a ser sanado. The broken marriage will be restored. El matrimonio quebrantado va a ser restaurado. When you let God be the center of the service, when you worship God, He automatically comes in here, and when He comes, everything that you need will be done. Amen. Cuando adoramos a Dios, Él viene. Y cuando Dios viene, todo es suplido. Everything you need shall be supplied. Why? Because He comes. He comes. And I don't want, I don't want God I don't want God to 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 uh to to just come and visit me. I want him to come and stay. Yo no quiero que Dios me venga y me visite. Yo quiero que Dios venga y se quede en mi vida. I want him to stay. Amen. But he wants my heart. Why my heart? Because my heart is connected to him. Can I tell you something that you might have not known? Te puedo decir algo? Can I tell you that the heart is the first organ that is ever created? In a baby. El corazón es el primer órgano que es creado en un niño. The heart. The heart is the first organ that is created in a baby. It, 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 it is very important that we understand how the heart works, uh, how the heart uh, uh, is. I, 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 I don't remember correctly, the women can probably tell you because they know, but I believe it's at 21 days or is it 21 weeks, I think it's 21 days, where the, you can be able to tell or hear the first time for the first time the heartbeat of the baby. 21 days? Right, babies that have a baby, anybody? Come on, talk to me. <laughs> yeah, it's like three weeks a month. Yeah. Twenty-one days. So, so that tells me that before you can ever hear the heartbeat, or before you can ever know whether it's a male or a female, there's a heartbeat mm -hmm. that's beating. Hay un corazón. And from that moment, from those, tw from that twenty-one day, until you die. That heart never loses a beat. Desde esos, desde esos primeros 21 años, 21 días, hasta, la, hasta el día que tú mueras, ese corazón nunca deja de batir. But you know what the, you know what the heart is doing inside the, the, the baby? It's communicating because it's connected to the heart of the mom. And it's communicating to the one that is giving life to it. El corazón del niño está conectado con el corazón de la mamá, aquella que le está dando vida. Gloria Señor, amén. It's powerful. Because when God created Adam, He made the dirt, He saw Adam y lo creó, aleluya. And with one breath, con un respiro de Dios, when he bred in, when, when he blew into Adam, cuando respiró en Adam, aleluya, everything inside of him, my God, with that one breath began to work. Every function in his body, toda función de su cuerpo empezó a trabajar con un soplo de aire de Dios. Yeah. And when his heart started beating, it started, it, it started communicating to the thing that gave him life. Cuando el corazón empezó a latir de Adán, empezó, empezó a tener comunicación con aquel que le dio vida. Amen. Until this day, whether you do good or you do bad, that heart is still communicating to the one who gave you life. Amen. Hagamos bien, hagamos mal, ese corazón todavía está conectado con aquel que nos dio vida. That's why he said that he's ready to come whenever you call. Why? Because there's a communi constant communication with the Creator that gave you life. Hay una comunicación constante de aquel que te dio vida. Por eso dice, háblame y yo vengo rápido. And the, the Bible says, he said, he don't know that uh, mind. He knows the intentions of the Why? Because it's connected. Dice Dios, yo conozco las intenciones, no de la mente, las intenciones del corazón. ¿Por qué? Porque tu corazón está conectado con el mío. Hallelujah. So when you worship, he knows if you're doing it from here or from here. Por eso cuando adoramos, él sabe si lo hacemos de aquí o lo hacemos de aquí. So what did he say? These people, their heart is over there. 
Yeah, they're still connected to me, but they're over there. Thank you, Jesus. My God, my God, my God. Aren't you glad that you are connected to the one that's giving you life? That's why you ain't die yet. Por eso no estás muerto. Because you're still connected and your heart, touch your heart, is it still beating? You might not know what it's saying to God, but I can guarantee you it's talking to him right now. It's telling him something right now. Quizás ahorita, si tu corazón está latiendo, tócate tu corazón porque le está diciendo algo a Dios. Quizás tú no lo sabes, pero está hablando por ti. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You plugged into the fountain. Estás, estás conectado a la fuente de vida. Aleluya. This is good. My God, aleluya. I'm, can you make a CD for me, please? Because I'm going to buy it. I'm buying for my own stuff. This is good stuff. This is good stuff. See, because the next time you come in here, you're not going to come in here like, whatever. I'm ready to go home. No, I'm ready to stay here. Yeah. 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 Cuando vengas otra vez a la iglesia, ya no vas a venir, eh, ya me quiero ir para la casa. No, vas a venir diciendo, Señor, yo necesito estar ahí. I need to be there because even if I'm not in church, God, I'm going to be connected to you at my house. I'm going to be connected to you at my job. My heart's going to be talking to you at my job when I'm busy. My heart's going to be talking to you when I'm making dishes or making making food. Or, I mean, uh, uh, washing the dishes or making food or changing the kids or getting that. My heart's still connected to you. Mi corazón todavía está conectado conmigo. Jesus. My God, my God. So we need to humble ourselves and come before the Lord. But the number two the thing that we need is faith. Amen. You need faith. Necesita la fe para venir a Dios to be able to worship. Because the Bible says in Hebrews 11, 6, that without faith it is impossible to please God. Dice la Biblia en Hebreos capítulo 6, 11, 6, dice que es imposible agradar a Dios. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he what exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Yeah. Dice, porque aquellos que, le, que vienen a él deben, tienen que creer que él existe y él es el galardonador o el, el que recompensa a aquellos que lo buscan. My God, my God. And the word earnestly seek him there means those who worship him. Aquellos que le adoran a él. And you have to understand that faith and humility go together. La fe y la humildad van juntos. Aleluya. Abraham was able to worship God through faith. Adán, Abraham pudo alabar a Dios a través de la fe. Adán, Abraham tuvo que adorar a Dios. Sí, I told you that sacrifice is one of the things that, 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 that we have to do when we worship God because sometimes it's a sacrifice. A veces es un sacrificio. It's a sacrifice because sometimes we don't want to. Right? Our flesh plainly just doesn't want to do nothing. Nuestra carne no quiere hacer nada. So sometimes you have to force. You have to force it to do it. Can I get an amen? amen. So what happens is that when Abraham, when God told Abraham for him to go sacrifice his son, cuando yo le dijo a Abraham, Abraham, quiero que vas a sacrificar a tu hijo. You know what Abraham did? When he was with his, with his uh, servants, cuando estaba con sus siervos, dijo, we're going to go worship. Dijo, vamos a ir a adorar. And then he acted, he put the faith in action. Puso la fe a, a, a trabajar when he said, and we want to come back. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Dijo, vamos a ir a adorar y luego vamos a regresar. He said, we are going to come back. I'm not coming back by myself. We're going to go worship and we're going to come back. Amen. So Abraham knew that God had given him a promise. Abraham sabía que yo le había dado una promesa. He said that you are going to be the father of many nations. Tú vas a ser el padre de muchas naciones. So Abraham said, I'm going to worship. I'm going to go sacrifice my son. But I'm putting my faith that even if he dies, God's going to raise him up with you. Si mi hijo muere, que tengo que matarlo. Y si muere, Dios lo va a levantar. Y si no, me va a dar otro hijo. And now he's going to give me another son. Because he gave me a promise prior to my son being born. Dios me había dado una promesa antes de que naciera mi hijo. Y me dijo que iba a tener, que iba a ser padre para muchas naciones. So he activated his faith, but he went to go worship God. Amen. Gloria a su nombre. He worshiped God at the same time believing. 
Yeah. Adorando a Dios a la misma vez, creyendo en Dios, aleluya. And it was pleasing to God. Yeah. Era, 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 aleluya. La Biblia dice que that he was found righteous. In other words, he said that heaven was in all. El cielo estaba, aleluya, atónito. Estaba, aleluya, con, con Abraham. ¿Por qué? Porque Abraham no cuestionó. He didn't question God. He just said, okay. Then he goes, okay, vamos. ¿Cuántos dicen amen? Are you here with me? Amen. Are you paying attention to what I'm saying? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. No. Woo, Jesus. So we have to do these things. The last thing that you got to do is obedience. Worship. Hallelujah. You need obedience. You need to humble yourself. You need to... Uh, 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 what was number two? Faith. Faith. And the last one is what? If there's no obedience, the Bible says obedience is better than... No, but it's better than sacrifice. Necesitamos obediencia because Abraham was obedient to take his son to worship. Jesus was obedient to the cross. Jesús era obediente hasta la cruz. So we need to obey. Tenemos que obedecer, mi hermano. The key is obedience. Why? Because we have to be ready to hear his voice. Escuchar su palabra y obedecer la palabra de Dios. And obey his word when he calls us and he speaks to us. It's very important that we understand. Because you know why? Because it takes action. Obedience takes action. Obediencia se requiere, mi hermano. Aleluya. Tomar acción. Can I, can, can I get an amen, somebody? Amen. Obedience takes actions. Hallelujah. The Bible says in James chapter 2, verse 21, Was not Abraham our father justified by the works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works? And by works, faith was made perfect. Amen. How was made, faith made perfect? Amen. By works. Santiago capítulo 2, versículo 21-22. Abraham, our father, justified by works went up when he offered Isaac his son to the altar. But then he said, faith was made perfect by his obedience unto God. A través de su obediencia a Dios. Aleluya. La fe fue perfecta. Faith was made perfect through obedience. Can I get an amen, amen. amen. We have to understand what worship does to God. What worship does to God. Lo que la adoración hace a Dios. Remember what I told you about David? David knew a key. David knew that worship could change situations. David sabía que la adoración cambiaba situaciones. That even in his worst days, David knew that he could still worship God. Aún en sus días más peores, David sabía que podía adorar a Dios. And he knew that when I worship God, that's going to do something to him. La adoración que yo le doy a Dios va a ser algo. That even, the Bible says that even if a sinner calls upon him, he's ready to come to him. Amen. Que aun si un pecador clama a Jesús, Jesús viene a él. Why? Because worship does something to him. La adoración hace algo en el corazón de Jesús. Es por eso que aun un pecador puede clamar a Jesús y Jesús viene rápido. We may judge people, but he does it. He comes quickly. Why? Because there's something about worship that melts the heart of God. Hay algo de la adoración, aleluya, que derrite el corazón de Dios. Señor, amen. I need you to get, get this in your mind that when you come in here, you understand who you're doing it to. Entiende a quién lo estás haciendo y por qué lo estás haciendo. Why are you doing it? And who are you doing it to? Hallelujah. Jesus already gave me access. So why am I going to stay outside? Why not come inside? Yeah. Si Jesús ya me dio el acceso, ¿para qué regresar? ¿Para qué estar afuera? ¿Por qué no meterme adentro? And then not make it, listen, make it a lifestyle. Amen. La adoración es un estilo de vida, mi hermano. Can I get an amen? Amen. So we have to learn to worship God. Tenemos que aprender a adorar a Dios. In the good times and in the bad times. Amen. When you have, when you don't have. Worship God, hallelujah. Worship God to the point to where you give. Listen, when you worship God, you are giving yourself to Him and you're letting Him take control. You know what Paul said? Paul said that he was at the end of his career. 
Pablo dijo que cuando él estaba al final de su carrera, ¿sabe qué dijo Pablo? Y no he dice, he said, I gave it up. He said, I was poured out like what? Dijo, yo, yo he sido derramado como agua. Dice, yo he sido todo, todo estoy vacío. I am empty, Paul said. Amen. I have emptied myself. I gave everything that I had for God. Amen. There's no ounce of me in me. No hay nada de mí adentro de mí. Todo lo dejé para Él. Y dice, and now awaits for me. A crown of glory. Ahora me espera una corona de vida. Because I was faithful and I poured everything that I had. Listen, we need to give ourselves. Because you know what? Because I told you this at the beginning. At the end of the day, you know what God wants? God wants you. God wants, Dios te quiere a ti. Al final del día, lo que Dios quiere es a ti. But you know what? A lot of the times, the preacher said this, that we have become consumers in the church. Que nos dijo un predicador en una ocasión, dijo, que vemos, tenemos a ser consumadores en la iglesia, meaning, God, I want, I want to take, I want to take, I want you to give me, I want you to give me this, I want you to come into me, I want you, but we never say, God, here I am. I offer myself as a living sacrifice. Yeah. Señor, nunca decimos, Señor, aquí estoy, me ofrezco a ti como un, un sacrificio vivo delante de ti. Muchas de las veces queremos que Dios nos dé, aquí estoy, Señor, y quiero, and sometimes we think that one song is going to move God, you can't move God. We think that we knock God over when we sing this song, and you don't do that because But when you offer yourself to God, He said, that's what I want. Cuando nos ofrecemos nosotros mismos a Dios, dice Dios, eso es lo que yo quiero. Amen. I want you. See, don't give me a song if you're not going to give me you. Amen. No me traigas una canción si no me vas a traer tu corazón. Because we, we're quick to sing to God, but our heart's not in it. Right. Estamos listos para cantarle a Dios, pero nuestro corazón no está ahí. Dice el Señor, no me traigas un canto si tu vida y tu corazón si no viene con el canto. If you're going to offer it to me, offer me everything. And let me take control of it. Déjame yo tomar control de tu vida. Can I get an amen? So church, our heart has to be right. That we have to understand. Oh, I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for the group to sing that one song that moves me. Estoy esperando que, que, que los músicos canten del canto que a mí me gusta. Hay pastores que no cantan de este canto que a mí me gusta. I don't sing this song that I... Any song can get you into his presence. Can I get amen? Cualquier canto te puede meter a la presencia de Dios. It's you. That's not nothing to do with the song. No tiene que ver nada con el canto. Eres tú. Eres tú. Hombre, en no, hola. La alabanza estuvo fea. It don't matter. You. How did you come in here? ¿Cómo tú entraste? Oh, the prayer of worship was ugly today. How were you? How did you come in here? That's right. That's right. Because at the end of the day, he's looking at your heart. You can't go before the Lord and say, No, hombre, uh, God, uh, the, the music, no, hombre, I mean, it was not good. Aren't you glad? God said to worship him only the ones that he didn't say that only the ones that had a good voice. He didn't say, Dios no dijo, adórenme solamente los que tienen un, una voz bien bonita. He said, let everything that has breath. I might not be able, uh, I might not know how to sing. I might not know how to hold a note. Quizás no sepa cantar. Quizás no sepa cómo, cómo mantener una nota. But, ah, my God, when I open up my mouth, the devil knows. Mm. Yes. Yes. Quizás no sepa cómo cantar, pero cuando yo abro mi boca, el diablo tiembla. Yes. I may not know how to, how to keep a beat or a rhythm, but when I open up my mouth, demons tremble. Hallelujah. Yes. Pues quizás no sepa mantenerme en el ritmo, pero cuando abro la boca, el diablo tiembla. Why? Because I have the heart of a worship. Amen. Tengo el corazón de que de un adorador. Amen. And the devil is not he's not scared of how much Bible you know. He's scared of worship. ¿Sabe por qué el diablo tiene miedo a la adoración? Because he knows that worship gets him here. 
You know why? Thank you, Lord. You know why the devil hates worship? Because he knows what he knows what worship does to God. Because he was the chief musician. He was the yeah. chief one. So he knew that when he used to sing to, to the Lord, he would see God. And he would see what worship was doing to God. So he's jealous and he's mad. And he can't come and do nothing to you. Because he knows that when you worship, God comes yeah. into your place. Yeah. Dios viene a tu presencia cuando tú adoras a Dios. Y el diablo lo sabe porque era el que le, le, le dirigía la alabanza a Dios ahí en el cielo. Y él miraba como, como, como se derritía a Dios a través de la alabanza. So he knows what worship does. He don't like for me to worship. Por eso no quiere que tú adores. You know what he does? He wants you to fall asleep. Thank God you was not asleep today. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. But other people are. <laughs> Joel took the day off today. <laughs> to give a break to other people. So, God is looking for true worshipers that will worship him. It's very true. The hour is. The hour has come. La hora ha venido. La hora ha llegado. When God is seeking true worshipers. La hora ha venido. La hora ha llegado cuando Dios ha buscado. Está buscando verdaderos adoradores. True worshipers. People that really know what worship really is. Gente que sabe y reconoce qué es la adoración verdadera. Dice el Señor, yo estoy buscando a esa gente que sabe adorarme. No, que sabe. He's not. He's saying, I'm looking for good singers. Because churches look for good singers. Churches look for good people. People that play. God didn't say, I'm looking for good singers. God is looking for... Worshippers. Dios anda buscando no buenos cantantes, buenos adoradores. There's a lot of plenty good singers out of the bars, out of the clubs, but they're not worshippers. Maybe they were worshippers, but not God worshippers. Amen. Hay buenos cantantes en las cantinas, en los bailes, pero no son adoradores. No le adoran a Dios vivo. So I'm glad that God didn't say he's looking for people that sing good because I can't sing. I just say, I don't, I don't know how to sing. I sing in the bathroom. I sing in the shower. But I'm glad he said, he did not say, I'm looking for people that can worship. He said, um, he said he's looking for true worshipers, yeah. not singers, that will worship him in spirit. Aquellos que le adoran en espíritu y en verdad. Con humildad. Con fe y en obediencia. With humility, with humbleness, with faith, and with obedience. You know why God wants your obedience? ¿Por qué Dios quiere tu obediencia? Because when He tells you something, He wants you to do it right there. Amen. Dios quiere tu obediencia porque cuando Él te quiere decir algo, quiere, te quiere decirlo y que tú digas, ok, yes, Lord, whatever you say, I'm going to do it. How many of you in here can say, God, if God tells me to do something, I'm going to do it? Amen. None of you? Okay. All right. Then we need to do an altar call in a minute. <laughs> he said, Pastor, uh, if, if God tells me to do something, I'm going to do it. How many can say that right now? Yeah. Keep your hand up. Because I'm, I'm, like God said, me to tell you to do something. So do it. <laughs> Go ahead. Just put my hand back now. God is looking for worshipers. The heart of a worshiper is this is this is the heart of a worshiper. The heart of a worshiper is knowing it, 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 it is worshiping God and going into a place where you know you're going to be hit from every angle. Yeah, that's right. David, David, David was and I don't want to bring one of these guitar. David was playing the heart. David was a worshiper. David was an adorador. And David had to go into the house of somebody who did not like him. He had to go into the house of somebody that was going to throw him spears and stuff and still had to maintain his worship because he was called to do a job. And he did not allow the situations to stop him from worshiping and doing what he was called to do. Right. Dios sabía, eh, David sabía que él, David era un adorador y él sabía que tenía que adorar a Dios y entrar en la casa de Saúl cuando él sabía que Saúl no lo quería y Saúl iba a aventar flechas y Saúl lo iba a tratar de matar y eso no quitó de que David siguiera adorando a Dios. Isn't it amazing that the first thing that happens is when things come at you, you stop serving God. Cuando viene el problema, dejas de, de servirle a Dios and then you stop worshiping Him. Deja de adorar a Dios y deja de servirle a Dios. 
But David said, you know what? I'm still playing. And then he was playing. He tocaba el arpa. And he had to duck. And he had to duck porque venían las flechas. Y venía Saúl. And he was still playing. He said, I got a job to do. And I can't touch the one who's trying to hurt me. I just got to live worship. Deal with him. Decía David, yo tengo que adorar a Dios. Y tenía que hacerse para los lados porque venían las flechas. Y decía, yo no voy a dejar que este me quite a mí de adorar a Dios. And you know what happened? When he worshiped God, cuando él adoró a Dios, the worship that David had and the anointing that he had, y la unción que tenía, se encargó del demonio que traía Saúl. The anointing of, of the worship that David was giving took care of the demon that Saul had. And the Bible says that demons started flying up. Demonios empezaron a salirse de Saúl cuando David adoró a Dios, no importando qué es lo que venía. Amén. When you understand that when you worship, he will take care of your enemies. That's right. Cuando tú adoras, él se va a encargar de tus enemigos. And you just keep on doing it. I've been called to worship. Yo he sido llamado a adorar a Dios. Deja que Dios te encargue de tus enemigos. Right. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Que Dios sea Dios levantado y sean sus enemigos esparcidos, dice la palabra de Dios. Amen. So church, we have to learn to worship. And we have to have the heart of a worship. Tenemos que aprender a adorar y tenemos que tener un corazón de adorador. Can I get an amen? My prayer is that when you come into church, you don't need nobody to get you to jump. That you already have it in you. Que tú ya tengas eso dentro de ti. Mi oración es que cuando tú vengas a la iglesia, no tienes que esperar a que alguien te ayude a que te haga brincar, sino que tú ya vienes con eso dentro de ti. Because you prepared at home. Porque te preparaste en la casa. Adoraste en la casa antes de adorar en la casa de Dios. You prayed at home or you worshiped at home before you worshiped here. Pastor, I can't do it because, it, because my kids are running around or it, my husband is or my wife did. I can, no, 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 no. Worship in the middle of everything. Adorale. But Pastor, my kids are all yelling. Yell louder than them and begin to worship God. Mis hijos están gritando, grita más recio que tus hijos. My husband is yelling at me, yell at him with praises, aleluya. Oh, mi esposo me está gritando, grítale a él con alabanzas a Dios. Let God take care of you. You're no good for nothing. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And the words that are coming out of his mouth will not affect me, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Learn how to worship God. Aprende a adorar a Dios en medio. Because that's what God is looking for. True worshipers. Verdaderos adoradores que le adoren en espíritu y en verdad. In, in spirit and in truth. Can I get an amen? Amen. Let's pray to our feet. Vamos a ponernos de pie.